What's good, YouTube? Flan speaks back for another video. All right, so the Indiana Fever take this one. They go to two and eight on the season, and the Chicago Sky fall to three and four as they take a victory 71 uh, 70, where we saw the first matchup in the um, professional careers of uh, rookie uh, Caitlin Clark, number one overall pick in this year's draft, and the number six pick, uh, Angel Reese. And um, we have to add to that the number three pick uh, in this year's draft, um, Camilla Cardosa. Um, interesting game, tale of a couple of stories. One story is you could tell the Indiana Fever really, really wanted this game. Desperately wanted this game. Came out to a nice, uh, quick start in the beginning. Caitlin Clark hitting two threes, uh, one of her signature logo ones. Uh, very aggressive in the beginning. Um, the Indiana Fever actually got off to they were uh, had the lead at the halftime, uh, and whereas the Chicago Sky appeared to be somewhat flat. I don't know if it was like um, wanting the the game really badly. Sometimes that can have the adverse effect, or if it's just being on the road, or whatever the case may be. Uh, it's an impressive uh, win for the Indiana Fever. Um, however, breaking this here uh, game down. What's most impressive to me about this particular game is uh, they were able to win the game with Caitlin Clark not playing particularly well. Now, she had a solid all-around game if you're just looking at the box score. You're talking about 11 points, 6 assists, uh, 8 rebounds. 8 rebounds is very impressive for a point guard, though she's a relatively large uh, point guard. Um, you know, she's a tall point guard. Uh, for for that league, um, but she was a minus two overall. It's a minus two because uh, on defense, you know, she didn't really have her best defensive game. But overall, like I saw some flashes, some good passes. You know, typical uh, Caitlin Clark. Um, she did one thing that I was most impressed with. I saw something new added to her game um, when she saw the small guard uh, on her you know, Evans. And this was in the fourth quarter. One of the best plays I've seen Caitlin Clark make. She backed the smaller guard down and uh, made a and scored in the paint. That's part of what I would like to see her do um, when it comes to growing her game. It can't just be logo threes, running around screens, and and that's it. You know, and getting to the rim, and that's all. But she's a rookie, you know. So we, we give that time. Uh, Looking at the, but it was very, uh, Nelissa Smith chipped in 17 points, uh, nine rebounds. It's very important that she has these types of games for the fever. The same with Kelsey Mitchell chipped in 18 points, uh, two rebounds, two assists. Uh, didn't get much from the bench this game except for uh, Katie Lou Samuelson chipped in five. Uh, to, if this game, if this team could put in more from the bench, but it looks like uh, Sides is going with just an eight-player rotation, but she pretty much got nothing from Wheeler, who played 20 minutes, um, can only contribute to assists. Wheeler, uh, yeah, I've said it before, is a disaster. Um, I, I've seen, I see flashes of, she has some ability there, but she's just a horrible finisher around the room, and um I don't know what they what they're gonna do about that. And then also the Grace Burger played seven minutes. I gave them gave them nothing, but the starters were all in double figures. It's um very impressive. Uh, even Aaliyah Boston, who I think um struggles, but she had a she had a really good game. Aaliyah Boston gave them some good minutes because uh, our job, you know, against Chicago is much tougher than Caitlin's job. She has to bang because Chicago is a team of bigs. And really, y'all haven't seen anything yet with those two. Um, the combination of Angel Reese and Camilla Cardoso is going to be a problem. All right. Um, you saw in this game where uh, Camilla Cardoso, you know, comes off the bench because she's on limited minutes. Only get, plays 18 minutes. But she chips in uh, in the first half, chips in a quick six points. She was three or three from, from the field in that first half. Uh, but she ends the game with 11 points, uh, six rebounds. 
And a lot of that, her not just going off, because I, you know, she could have scored 20, you know. A lot of her going off was the play of Aaliyah Boston banging with her down there. Like, many of y'all not understanding. If she, if Aaliyah Boston and Alyssa Smith don't do their banging, there's no way they win this game. I don't care how many points um, uh, Caitlin scores. And, and Caitlin, you know, was not particularly uh, prolific scoring in this game. Um, but if you look at just the rebounding, all right, Angel Reese chips in 13 rebounds. That's the Shot Town Queen of Rebound, people. Uh, the Shot Town Queen of Rebound. That's 13 rebounds, uh, eight points. All right. Angel, you know, as I said before, Angel needs to develop two to three go to moves. And she needs to be decisive in the paint. Once the ball gets there, but actually before the ball gets there, she has to know in her mind, based on the way the defender is playing her, the way she's posting them up, what move she's going to do. All right, bam, I'm going to go to a hook, going right. Or I'm going to go to a turnaround. Or I'm going to do an underneath, uh, up, up and underneath. Get the defender up in the air. She does a good job of getting to the foul line sometimes. But if she develops just one or two go-to moves, you know, uh, She'll be, her game will just go to the next level. But she's probably likely going to be a double-double player, just just anyway. Um, Elizabeth Williams, you know, chips in 22 minutes, uh, gives him five rebounds, which isn't bad, two points. And more than likely, what they're going to have to do is, well, Cardoso is going to take that spot. Uh, Marina Mabry is probably the player that was... Um, I'm not going to say the most disappointing, but she she just kind of choked the game away. This game would have easily went into overtime. All she had to do was make her free throws. Uh, and you had guard Dana Evans. Solid game. Uh, good defense. Um, and so on. Now, uh, some of the other notable happenings in this particular game, um, because, you know, Caitlin Clark um, – Fans, they like to focus on, you know, why Caitlin isn't scoring 30 as more so than look at the, the entire game. So we're going to talk about some of that. Um, listen, l listen to me. I get where some of you are getting at when it's when you're talking about the physicality of the WNBA. I get what you're talking about when you say, you know, Caitlin Clark is dealing with a lot of physicality. Um what what I don't get though is how you act like it's something completely altogether different from what everyone else is dealing with. Okay, um, I saw the, the the Kennedy Carter play. I saw that. I saw it. Yeah, um, Kennedy Carter did uh, what I would consider a, a weak minded play. This is a play that, you know, a weak-minded person does, that loses their cool, they fiery, okay? I don't, I don't know if Caitlin and her were chipping at each other, whatever. doesn't matter, the, you know, the play where that had nothing to do with anything. You go up to her and you just kind of hit her, right? It was stupid on a number of levels. Uh, number one, you're already cooking Caitlin Clark anyway. Kennedy Carter, Kennedy Carter scores 19 points. Caitlin's at 11, okay? Caitlin's turned the ball over five times. You only turned the ball over three times. You're already out playing her. What are you, what are you hitting her for? For what? Um, the officials should have called a flagrant one because it was a non-basketball play. It was away from the ball. There's no play on the ball or anything like that. And Caitlin should have shot three free throws as opposed to one. That was not a common foul. So that was um, bad on the officials. If I'm Teresa Witherspoon, I also sit Carter. This is different. But if I'm Teresa Witherspoon, I sit Carter for a few minutes extra if I had to think about that because you don't want that in the game. It's a number of reasons you don't want that in the game. Me personally, I don't want it in the game because it gives, uh, you know, the thing I care about. <laughs> it gives Caitlin Clark's uh, fan base like um, something valid to bitch about the, the majority of the the um contact caitlin deals with is just wnba contact 
you know, because I, I actually watch other games. I watch the Aces play. I watch um, uh, other teams. Uh, she's not dealing with some inordinate amount of contact that other people are dealing with. Now, the Kennedy Carter play makes it look like that because Kennedy Carter is a fool, was a fool in that, in that situation. But Carter is a player that has been suspended for conduct detrimental to the team by the by Atlanta already, the Atlanta Dream have already uh, suspended her for that. So she's a hothead, or she's something. She's troubled in some sort of way, right? What I'm hoping is that um, Caitlin doesn't have doesn't have a similar spirit. That's what that's kind of what I'm hoping. I don't think Caitlin would actually hit someone like that, but she obviously gets into the jawing with people, and and that's okay. Just don't allow it to harm the team. Don't get technical fouls. Don't give free throws to the other team. That's all. All right? But obviously, Carter should have been, you know, that should have been a flavor. I don't think she should have been, she should have been ejected. It could have been a flavor. Uh, now, the other one where um, she tries to bang with Angel Reese, she tries to, like, box out with Angel Reese, listen, Angel Reese is a big. He's a power forward. Caitlin Clark is a guard. When you go down there with them power forwards, that's what happens. I know a lot of y'all don't don't get that, but that's what happens when you're when you're when you're a guard and you bang with power forwards, and then they push you. That's what they do because they're assuming you're trying to bang and box out. You down there if you bought that life, then go down there. If you're not about that life, stay away from there. So when Angel Reese pushed her, that was basically a common move that you're making when you're boxing out. That's what happens when you deal with rebounders. Like when like Alyssa Thompson and Angel Reese, like the way they go at, that's what they do. That's what bigs do. That wasn't like a cheap shot or anything like that. And Caitlin, I believe, was flopping a little bit. A little bit was a little, a little bit of flopping on that. Unless Angel Reese is just that cock strong and, and Caitlin is that weak. I don't know. Um, but that was, I think, a little excessive the way she fought on that. And I believe that was a good no call. On the, on the one with, uh, with Angel. Uh, the other time when she ended up limping, I'm hoping y'all don't believe Cardosa did something to her because I think y'all are that ridiculous, some of you. Right, she drove in there, went past. Cardosa had her hands up. She jumped out the way. There may have been some inadvertent contact there. Maybe. I don't know. But I believe that was a good no call. Also, outside of that, the rest of the game, it just is the game. I've only seen uh, her get blitzed once. Actually, that was in the fourth quarter, and she turned the goddamn ball over when she was blitzed, all right, which caused, um, which puts Kathy Sides in a situation where you got to take the ball out of her hands. I know y'all don't see any flaws in her game, but that's what happened. That's why at the end of the game, she's not handling the ball because she already had five turnovers. Can't turn the damn ball over and win. I don't care how fancy you think a pass is, how good you think the hands of the, the, your teammates need to be and all, you just can't keep turning the damn ball over. That's seven turnovers this game. I mean, that's five turnovers this game, seven turnovers last game. All right? Will it improve? Probably, but, you know, you want to win these games, you just can't turn the damn ball over. It's, that's, that's basketball. All right? Um, but, again, all in all, good, good win for the Fever. It shows some toughness there. I'm impressed with it because to beat the Chicago Sky's defense in their bigs, Okay, they do have some guards, Mabry, who choked, and they have Carter. If Carter could get her damn head right, she get her head right and stop getting distracted by trash talk or whatever, they could be strong. You know, you look at Carter and um, Mabry, that could be, you know, really strong. Or Carter and Evans, you look at the, those guards, but I guess you start Mabry, you go with Evans, and Carter off the bench. That is, that's strong guard play, you know. And um, once they acclimate Camilla into the rotation regularly. When she's got that starting rotation and you go with Reese with that and you go with those guards, Chicago going to be something to deal with. They're going to be that deal. And um, they'll be a team similar to uh, the um, Connecticut Sun, who is probably the best team right now that I've seen without a doubt because, you know, me, I love defense. So, you know, that's, that's my kind of team right there. Um, So... Yeah, that's my thoughts on that anyway. And um, I get with y'all. Peace.